Mixed by the side of the book, they in line with them, and that was doing completely four times. Theater for everybody, yes, everybody. That is what Susie does. And indeed, my understanding of my relationship to that has already changed. The survival of theater as an art form depends on that. very, very highly of the work of the, the Lincoln Center here at Saga Program and this institution, you know, like the Royal Court for the National Program and somehow in a way also what we think of our work as one of the few places that's open that is interested in voices from around the world, interested in young artists and also a place that actually gives space and gives opportunities and connects uh, people and artists. And artists do the encouragement, they do young artists, especially people but also teachers or someone who listens Hugely valuable, and I think uh, the Lincoln Center Ballet Program, the thing that separates us from Hope Street Jazz Band for this work, is uh, truly, truly, truly uh, outstanding, extraordinary, and I can only imagine that it really means the organizers who put it together, and what the students, and what the participants, the beats are, and all the organizational sides, but also their concepts, whether they have or dreams, or uh, uh, poems, or site specific, or whatever they the uh, uh, the um and or others come up with. Um, so it is a quite, a quite an uh, incredible betting average uh, uh, they have. If you look at the people who participated, the artists over that time, but also really truly the network, the international network it created, and it really communicates that America is an open place, a place that is interested in voices from around the world. We just had Pinball Voices here where we also participated, we had 10 playwrights, and um, Paul Oster and Salman Rushdie created the festival because they felt very strongly is a tunnel vision. We do not hear enough from what's going on. And every musician, we just heard jazz, every musician listens to music from all around the world, young musicians, and what they do is important for your local practice. But you have to sing or be engaged globally. And this is what this extraordinary uh, director's lab does. So we are very honored uh, for all of you to come and uh, to, uh, to also get a little insight. We always feel it's a, a, a bit under the water. We don't uh, hear enough about it. I don't feel it has really gotten the real recognition it truly deserves. Um, so many people also who come here, or others or I meet internationally say, yeah, I was at the Lincoln Center's director's lab. Yeah, I know Anne Catania. Yeah, okay, uh, that's, uh, how, how did that happen? And I don't know the numbers, most probably Anne will say something about our, our staggering 
of how many lives have been touched, influenced, and how many artistic collaborations came out of it. So um, again, our highest respects. Thank you for coming. And uh, so for us in the audience, also for the live stream audience we have here, we now really hopefully will get a little insight into that uh, a fancy, beautiful Lincoln Center Theater car. We're going to open the hood and look a little bit inside. What's really <laughs> happening there? What are they doing? What, what has done? And it's really, this is a conversation among friends. We don't really know also what they will say. So it's really uh, to inform us um, what the center is all about. And I know the new lab is coming up in June or July? August. In August. And, um, and good luck with that and congratulations. But uh, that's it for me um, now. And um, I think we're going to start with the very first uh, collaboration. The format will be we will have some video tributes because not everybody could come here in person. It is a global um, um, uh, initiative. And of course, we were unable to, to fly and people. So we have people here in the room, but also some here on the video. And after that, right away, we go into some kind of a town hall um, discussion. And we can ask questions, make remarks, comments, and uh, maybe talk about uh, whatever uh, we will touch on. So we are all very curious to see uh, what we will get from the videos and what you all have to say. Thank you very much, and um, let's start. So our first speaker is going to be Mia Anderson, and we're going to, you have your programs. We're going to have a speaker, and then we're going to have a video from somewhere around the world, and then we're going to have the B speaker, that's Hal, and then we're going to have a video. So you can follow it alphabetically on your programs. So Mia, you're up first. Hello, my name is Mia. I was part of the 2015 Director's Lab, and the theme was Difficult Plays. So um, the play that I had chose was the, was the Owl Answers, a play I had been thinking about for years, and I had gotten it out of this uh, book I bought like at some used bookstore, which is always dangerous to going to. Um, but it had a list of all the black plays from like 1800s on, and so, um, and the Owl Answers was always one of those plays that I found really intriguing, and then I felt like I didn't know what was going on at the same time. And so the experience at the lab for me was a very, very positive one. Um, it was definitely um, borderline exhaustive because we had like 10 hour days. So um, every morning I was just, you know, getting my emergency seat and making sure I had the energy to keep going to the end. Um, but in that, in the director's lab, I got a chance to talk to Adrian Kennedy, which was qu quite a highlight. Um, I met some really other incredible, um, you'll hear from them as like Neil Chaudhry and Eva Mann was part of my class. And I really got a chance to see other people's, other people's ideas that really inform my ideas. And then also I write as well. And that fabulous, fabulous listserv, which is like the well that just keeps on giving. Um, through that well, I was actually able to get through a writing residency, where then I wrote my first solo play, which is now, um, which is, it was like, uh, had its first uh, showing last year. So that all came through the director's lab. So I always say the director's lab is a gift that just keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. um, so I am very, and then of course, I'm an Ann, who is just amazing. So the whole experience I find really, I found positive and really took my, I felt my career and it shifted it, it made it, in, it took it to another place. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, me. And we'll follow this with a video from Lebanon, uh, from Beirut, Sahara Asaf. Hello from Beirut, Lebanon, this is Sahara Asaf. I'm an actress and a director and also an assistant professor of theater at the American University of Beirut. I was a member of Lincoln Center Director's Lab in 2014. And to put it briefly, because two minutes are not gonna be enough to, to talk about this experience, but really to put it briefly, I remember writing to Anne Cattaneo after returning home after this Rachel invited me at the beginning of 2016 to play the title role of an Arab woman piece by Dari von Frank Harami, a solo show that she was directing for the solo show festival uh, for the, of this action. And we, it was a fascinating experience for both Rachel and I, but we decided to continue collaborating 
So a few months later, I invite Rachel to Beirut for the 2016 to go through actually making clear um, that we were putting a future initiative at EUD, we were putting the play to celebrate AUD's 150th anniversary and Shakespeare's 400th death anniversary. So Rachel and Mark Lightbacker, her partner at the faction, came to London to Beirut and um, we, we constructed the play, which was referred to by, referred to by a Lebanese critic as a gift to the Lebanese theatre. It was another successful collaboration. It, and it was also a trigger for me to think about a sister lab for directors lab in the Mediterranean region. There's a huge need for a platform to bring directors together, directors from the, from the Mediterranean, but also from the world to the region to explore the uh, culture and artistic traditions that we have. So I, last year, I write to Anne Catano saying that I'm coming to, Tor to Toronto in June to participate in the Directors Lab Awards. And I said that I'm happy to pass by New York if her time allows for a meeting to discuss this idea. So the magic and karma, and Anne can tell you a lot about the magic that happened because of Lincoln Center's lab, Anne writes back to me within a few hours, I think, and she says, I'm in Beirut this week. <laughs> so we have, we, have it, we have a meeting with a few other um, Lebanese practitioners. We started the conversation that we also continued in Toronto and also in New York until we decided that we're going to start by having a retreat for some um, Mediterranean alumni of the lab. So, that happened in January 2018, this year. We, um, we held a retreat for Directors Lab in the Mediterranean at the American University of Beirut, where we had participating directors from Lebanon, from Jordan, uh, from Athens, from Spain, from Italy, uh, some directors from uh, by Skype from France, uh, from Brazil. Rachel was also there from London and Paul Simon from New York. And the participating directors in the retreat decided that we're going to launch a director's lab in the Mediterranean, summer of 2019, in uh, Beirut, Lebanon. So this is a invitation for <laughs> all of you directors that are out there in the audience tonight to come to Beirut in 2019. We will tell you more about it. A website will be launched very soon. Um, I guess I'm, I exceeded my two minute time, but this is just uh, really a brief testimony of how overwhelming the experience was, how rewarding it was, one of the best experiences I had throughout my theater career. Thank you, Anne Catania, for starting this lab, and thank you for your open mind and for the support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Hal Brooks. Hi, everybody. Uh, Hal Brooks, uh, 2001. Uh, that's a long time ago. And um, at that time, I had, um, I'd been out of the theater world for about four years, and I called a friend of mine, uh, Diane Paulus, who had uh, been part of the lab, I believe, at some point, or at least knew of the lab. And uh, I, I said, you know, how do I get back into the world of, of theater? I've taken four years away. And she said, well, I recommend Lincoln Center Theater Director's Lab. And sure enough, I look online. I guess at that point, there was something online about applications, and the application was due the next day. <laughs> so I quickly perused the uh, application, and the theme that year was style. And what I remember is that you had to uh, you know, write about three different plays. And one of the plays that I wrote about um, that I thought had a particular style that I'd want to work on was um, Valparaiso by Don DeLillo. And Don DeLillo was my favorite novelist, and the first uh, play I ever directed was a, a play of his called The Day Room. Um, so I applied with that in mind, and um, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't really know what the lab was, but a month later I got an email. Uh, so there were emails at that point um, saying, congratulations and welcome to the Lincoln Center Theater Director's Lab. You will be workshopping the play Valparaiso. And then a, a few days later I get a call from Annie, and she says, oh, I bumped into DeLillo's agent um, you expect a call from him this week. And I said, that's not going to happen. He's a, he's a reclusive uh, novelist. That's, that's not going to happen. He's going to call. So a week later, I'm having lunch with Don DeLillo, <laughs> which was pretty amazing for me. Um, and then that at the lab itself, 
It was a three-week lab, and I think a week we spent working on Valparaiso, and there were another, a, a bunch of other plays that were being workshopped. Uh, and DeLillo came. He was really interested. He was into it. Uh, we were playing. It was, it's a play about um, a man who has lost his identity, which I suppose I had prior to being uh, taken into the, the lab. Um, uh, a series of, of, of interviews. So we were working with a bunch of different interview techniques. Uh, and DeLillo was present the whole time. And out of that, I was very enthused and um, knew that I needed to get this play produced. So I brought it to uh, some friends of mine uh, uh, who ran a theater company called the Rude Mechanicals of New York. Uh, we had a reading in October of 2001, just after September 11th, and this was a play also about uh, pretty horrible things happening on an airplane. So we were literally down at about a few blocks from Ground Zero having a reading of DeLillo's play, and that's where I met Will Eno, who was sort of his DeLillo's scout at the moment. Um, and then within a year, that play received a production, um, and it put me uh, you know, in a different place as a director. Um, as did the whole lab. The whole lab experience was was uh, was kind of amazing. It was a boot camp, as as those of you who have participated in it know. It was 100 people or so from all over the country, international, um, and everybody had their own different aesthetic. And that was, I think, the most incredible thing was you got to talk to people who approached theater in a completely different way than you did. Um, but I just want to thank you, Annie. You have been there all the time. Every time I have a play, I call her. She comes and she sees it. Uh, and you're an incredible resource to all directors across the world. Thank you. Okay, and our next video is Neil, uh, who is beaming in live. Where is he? In Bangalore? Uh, yeah, Bangalore. Hi, my name is Neil Chaudhary, and I'm a playwright and director with the Tadpole Repertory, which is a theater group based in New Delhi in India. Uh, I had the great uh, pleasure to be invited to the Lincoln Center Director's Lab in 2015 and 2016. Uh, in 2015, I was part of uh, uh, a group of 56 directors, uh, part of what Chang calls her Sudoku puzzle. And uh, I was really fortunate to be in a wonderful group of uh, with seven other directors, and we worked on a beautiful Syrian text uh, called Drunken Days. And uh, some of the members of that group continue to be friends and in touch. Um, in 2016, I had the very rare opportunity to work on a play uh, that I consider certainly one of the best plays written in India over the last 15 years, uh, a Manipuri play uh, called Turel. Uh, and the playwright Swar was also invited to New York. And the two of us worked with a a wonderfully uh, reflective and uh, uh, intuitive group of uh, actors to, um, well, at some level, realize some of the questions and uh, um, directions we wanted to move the text in over three weeks. I mean, that, that second uh, experience at the lab is one that I, I will treasure for many, many years. Um, and it would not have been possible, certainly, without the support of Anne and her team. And um, finally, one of the most exciting things to have come out of the lab for me is an international collective that I'm a part of called Pluto, which includes uh, five other directors from Argentina, Brazil, Germany, France, and Uruguay. Uh, we hoped, uh, we hope rather, to be able to um, create work together collaboratively and really, the spirit of that uh, desire, the spirit of that intention really comes from uh, our time at the lab and uh, recognizing in each other uh, us, uh, affinities and contradictions. And I think that's what makes uh, the Lincoln Center Lab uh, such a wonderful place. And thank you for, uh, thank you for having me there. Hello, I am Dr. Sherelle Luckett. I am a, uh, a theater director, a professor, and an acting teacher, and a member of the Director's Lab of 2014. We were talking about the audience, and the audience was super important. Um, and during that time, we got to hear from uh, a lot of really, really, really uh, interesting uh, creative folks like Bartlett Sher, um, Bill Irwin, 
One in particular, the Dog and Pony Show from Washington, D.C. I hope I'm saying their company's name right. It was amazing. They did some interactive audience work uh, with the lab members, and I stayed in touch with them, Rachel, Rachel Grossman, and I ended up in Washington, D.C., um, workshopping something with them as well. Uh, but I think the most exciting thing that the lab did for me was make me uh, get to my purpose in this time a little bit quicker. Uh, I am super interested in acting methodology and directing methodologies rooted in a black American cultural aesthetic and Afrocentricity. And when I was attending the lab, it was so cool to be in a room with you know, 70 folks from around the globe and to find things that were familiar uh, to us and to also talk about the differences. Um, and something that had already been on my mind before I attended the lab was uh, where are the black voices in acting methodologies and directing methodologies. And so I attended a workshop at the lab by Hope Azeda, an amazing artist from Rwanda, Rwanda, and she started to do things in her workshop that were familiar to me as a black American person, but also different. But what I loved about it is that um, I felt like it was some kind of diasporic uh, cultural connection in what she was doing. And I decided at that moment that I need to put the other research I was doing aside and to work on a, uh, a, a, I guess what is now a movement, a book called Black Acting Methods, Critical Approaches that came out in the fall of 2016 with a whole bunch of other amazing scholars and endorsed by Ann Bogard and Kenny Leon and Ann Catanio has been super supportive of that. And um, we are about to have uh, a national symposium talking about black acting methodologies. And so if it wasn't for the lab and the workshop with Hope Azeda, I don't think it, the book would have been out here um, as quick as it is and all of the movement that's happening around it. And it was just a great, uh, inspiring moment to be a part of the director's lab. Thank y'all. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ernest Figueroa, and I attended the Lincoln Center Theater Director's Lab in its fourth year, and was on a panel of the year that Anne and the lab celebrated its fifth year anniversary. It would not be an overstatement to say that the lab literally changed my life. The year that I attended the lab, I was Associate Artistic Director of the Sacramento Theater Company, but I was also the literary manager and the casting director, so I was literally burned out. Then I went to the lab. And I met the most amazing group of directors and designers and actors. Many who have become lifelong friends. I was inspired and rejuvenated. But the thing I remember most about those three weeks is something that Anne kept telling us almost every day and every night. And that was, you are the future of American theater. By the way, did I tell you you're the future of American theater? <laughs> oh, and don't forget, you are the future of American theater. <laughs> Well, the lab ended and I went back to Sacramento and within three days, the artistic director took me out to lunch and told me that he had taken another job and was leaving the theater. And that my job was being terminated and I was leaving as well. <laughs> and all I could think of while I was staring at my salad was, so what, I'm the future of American theater. <laughs> well, within two years, I returned to my home in Los Angeles and connected with four of the alumni from Lincoln Center Theater Director's Lab and we together launched what has now become Director's Lab West. That was 19 years ago. As the only remaining founding member of Director's Lab West, which has been hosted many years now by the Pasadena Playhouse and supported by the Stage Directors and Choreographer Society, I am proudly have given back to the over 600 national and international directors who have gone through our program. Just to know that Director's Lab West has inspired and rejuvenated people like the three weeks did to me in New York, invigorates me in planning for our 20th anniversary in 2019. So from the entire steering committee of Director's Lab West, Jenna Miller, Shoy Adams, Diana Wayne, and myself, we want to say congratulations to Antonio and Andre Bishop and all the members of both labs and to say that it is really true we are the future of the American theater. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, great. Um, RJ. Yes, it's on, it's on. Well, uh, hi, I'm Rajend from Maharaj, but back in the day, I used to be RJ because I was a little boy when I got into the lab. Um, I'm just so, I'm so proud to be in this room, and I'm so proud of one of my moms in the theater and one of the queens of the theater who saw in a really nappy-headed, dreadlocked kid 
who dreamt of the theater and gave me a platform. And that platform has changed the course of my life um, because um, a lot of people don't know this, but during the time I was in the lab, I was actually homeless. I was in a shelter. Um, and I would go to the lab and be able to dream and have this amazing escape and then it would lead me to go and read plays and learn. And it took me to meeting my heroes who became my mentors like George C. Wolfe and Woody King Jr. and Kenny Leon and all these great artists who have literally mentored me become my hammers and chisels in my journey. And it literally is the lab that changed my life because I had established a relationship with here through the lab and they reviewed one of my works and the, the New York Times said I was the most one of the most talented young directors in New York, blah, blah, blah. And that led to agents, led to daytime television, led to all my children, led to The View, led to Broadway, Yale University, and continued, continued, continued to shape who I became, Associate Artistic Director of The Lark, Associate Artistic Director of Syracuse Stage, Artistic Director of New Freedom Theater, the oldest black theater in the nation. And so from that homeless shelter, going to the lab and you know, being around all these artists, it really changed the course of my life. And I am so proud because it helped me to know that I am an artist and activist. That is the center of my work, that I could write. I had a wonderful conversation with um, Miss Julie Tamar uh, when she was doing The Lion King. She brought in the, the puppets and, and she sat with me for a second and she said, you know, we can write and direct. We, we are multitudes. Like Whitman says, we are multitudes. And so I, I held on to that. And here we are, um, you know, all these years later, and I'm about to open my off-Broadway show as a writer-director at the Sheen Center, the story of the Little Rock Nine that's gonna be running throughout the summer. And I still think about that time had I not had that opportunity in the lab, had I not had Anne's support and prayers and, and lifting me up on my shoulders, um, I would not be standing here. And um, I say to all the artists around the world who are watching, who are in you know, dire straits financially or don't know if they can direct, it is possible if someone uh, gives you the platform to rise and to know that you're not alone. I think that's something as, um, as uh, in the lab we said, you know, we're often icebergs directors. We're alone in the room and we have the stage manager, the actors, but we're really not. And so I thank you, Anne. I thank you, Lincoln Center Lab, because it has been the beginning of the yellow brick road of dreams for this little boy who dreamt of being a director. Thank you. Okay, and, uh, and from uh, uh, Switzerland, uh, Eva Mann. Hi, my name is Eva Mann. I'm a theater director, translator, dramaturg, working mostly in Switzerland. And I was a member of the Lincoln Center Directors Lab in 2014 and 2015. Here are two examples of ways in which it really um, changed the way I function as a director. So the first thing was it connected me with um, fellow professionals that shared my values and that encouraged me to do work I really believe in as opposed to work that happens to be in or on vogue in my specific geographic location. That would especially um, mean using community theater as a way to discuss societal issues. Um, it also connected me with Washington Obwanda uh, from Kenya with I am now working on our second production. Uh, the first was a piece of forum theater called My Dress is My Choice, which we worked on in Kenya and performed in Madara, which is a, an area of Nairobi. It was about this unholy allegiance between um, sort of toxic masculinity, religious opinions, and cultural discomfort that sort of leads to bullying of women based on their choice for Closing. And the really interesting outcome of this was that the audience at President Madara then found the most important person in this conflict is the bystander because he really has the chance to step in and say, hey guys, why are you doing this? Stop it now. We are now working on a play called Favorite Fear, which um, will use documentary material and video from both Kenya and Switzerland and we'll explore how fear is a, a cherished part of our identity and whether our fears are more culturally based or more an expression of our own individual personality. 
we didn't get to see her face. <laughs> uh, okay, Maria. Hi, um, my name is Maria Myleaf, and I was I have the special privilege of being part of the lab for the first three years of the lab before I got kicked out. So um, I, I just wanted to you know add to what everybody was saying, and there was just two things that I was thinking about. And one thing is that I'm um, being part of the inaugural lab, really, and I had just moved to New York also when that happened, and it it built a community that I'm very much still in touch with, and making theater, making art. Um, you know, it's really important to have colleagues who will come, who will show up, who will tell you not to do your bag of tricks, who will encourage you and have things to say. So that is something that um, I don't even uh, realize how important it is to me. And then the other anecdote is just that, um, having always been a <laughs> really optimistic person, um, the second year of the lab, Annie invited us to uh, propose my phone, sorry. Annie invited us to propose a project that we'd like to work on. And I, I knew this play that I loved that had um, 76 characters and it took place underwater. So I was like, I'm just gonna send her that. Like. <laughs> and she called me and she said, how are you gonna do that? Which was um, a lesson that I think about every day. Really important lesson that I think about every day. And um, I did do it. <laughs> um, it looked like it took place underwater. It was beautiful production with um, really important collaborators, and I will always be grateful for that reminder to dream, dream big, and make it happen. So, thank you, Annie. Uh, we have a tape from um, uh, Mexico, Lillian. Hello, my name is Lilia Fidelos, and I am from Mexico. And I had the opportunity to attend the Lincoln Center Theater Directory Club on 2015 and 2016. The first year that I was there, we worked on a difficult to direct plays. And I remember that there were around 50 directors from, coming from all over the world. So they split the directors into groups. And we, each group worked with one single play. So as a result of this exercise, at the end of the program, we have eight different versions of the one single play that we were working on. And I think that is a very, very interesting exercise. Um, and also it gave you the opportunity to see the working process of the other directors, which you do not have um, the chance to see uh, very often. You are the director in the room, so you don't really have the chance to see other directors um, doing the job. Uh, so that was an amazing opportunity as, as a director. I never expected to meet so many people from so many different cultures and so many different ways of doing theater. And, and I had the chance to make a lot of friends um, that I had actually visited in the home countries. Um, on 2016, we worked on new plays and we had the playwright in the room with us making adjustments to the play as we were working on them. Um, that year was very different from the previous year because there were only six directors attending the, the lab. And at the end of the, of the program, you had the opportunity to make a showcase of your work. After the lab, I kept in touch with some of the playwrights, some of the actors, and some of the directors, and we have talked about working together. I am very soon starting to direct one of the plays that was presented in the lab. I will be also working with one of the playwrights, co-writing a bilingual play. You actually um, keep working with the people that you meet in the lab. For me, the Lincoln Center Theater Directors Lab can be explained in one word, generosity. I think it is a very generous idea to uh, create the, or a program where directors from all over the world can come and get together and share their ideas and their experience and their processes and, and also 
uh, it is a very generous um, a program because it doesn't end when the summer ends. It has continuity and it, it becomes an ever-growing community of people that is always there for you to help you. It's because of programs like this that I have the opportunity to grow as a, as a director and also as an educator because it gave me an experience that I can share with my students. So I am very, very proud to be a member of the Lincoln Center Theater Director Club. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, it's, it's all very moving. Um, Elise. Hi, um, I'm Elise Singer, and I was a member of the uh, inaugural 1995 lab and the 1996 lab. Um, I'm also a third year PhD student in theater and performance here at the CUNY Graduate Center. Um, so I have both hats on right now. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about some of the, some of the things that, so people who were in more recent labs might not know about how, where the lab started. I mean, with the very first year of the lab, there were a hundred, um, a hundred of us, and I think it was all mostly New York. We were mostly New York. Some like you know, Los Angeles was exotic. Um, it, it was so it was, and and a lot of us knew each other because I think that the first group um, had you know I think uh, here like Tiny Mythic had provide you know sent out a mailer. Um, this was uh, everything was done by mail and fax and there was no email. Um, I actually was one of the people who helped uh, launch the listserv um, after the first year. Um, but um, I wanted to share a project that we did that uh, came, that happened between the, because the first year we only thought it was a one-shot deal. We thought it was gonna be this one-time event and that was gonna be it. And the first year, uh, some of the most extraordinary artists from all over the world came to talk to us. And it was actually almost like the setup we have here where you guys are all listening and we'd have somebody who was talking. And what ended up happening after several days of that, um, sometimes we would get up and like maybe we'd do biomechanics or we would do something, but mostly we were sitting and listening. And after about a week or so, people started to move into this little second room next door and there started to be a little bit of rumbling. There was a little grumbling and rumbling of saying, we wanna work, we wanna do stuff, we wanna do things together. We don't want to just sit and listen. And that energy uh, percolated um, and actually started to form a bond between us, which was unusual because I think at that time, directors were more in competition with each other. We were all going up for the same jobs or we were all, you know, it, 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 but, but sort of in those rumblings in the hall of we want to do something together, we want to get up off our feet, we started to form these bonds. And I actually, um, a couple months later, I, I met somebody named Alan Bushman uh, who had this giant space up on 91st Street and he said, oh, I wanna do some, some theater work. I said, oh, well, I know about 100 directors who <laughs> might wanna do something. And so we, we did a, a, a festival of Chekhov plays um, that happened over a weekend and a, a, I know 30 or 40 directors participated in that. And we ended up over the course of that summer um, or that spring and then into the summer, um, 86 directors participated in these labs that had different themes and we did uh, women in the avant-garde and we did Strindberg and Chekhov and, um, and, and this was also, this was directors producing other directors and supporting each other and doing each other's lights and doing each other's, um, you know, jumping in and helping and there was like $200 for the whole 86 plays. Um, combined, and it was an amazing experience, and some incredible collaborations, and other theater companies actually evolved out of that. Um, a lot of people, Jack Cummings, Transport Group, a lot of, a lot of people, um, that was the first time that they ever worked in New York. So one of the gifts that the lab actually gave me was as a producer, um, and as a producer also of large-scale events, and to not be afraid of that, and to not be um, and to be supportive of my fellow directors and, and realizing that um, we can all give to each other and that's actually one of the ways that we really learn. Um, so thank you, Anne. Thank you. Uh, 
and our, and our last, last video is Evan from uh, Toronto, among other places. Hello, my name is Evan Chichos, and I am a Lincoln Lab alum from 2009 and 2010. Uh, first off, let me give a huge congratulations to Anne and the Lincoln Center for over 20 years of providing the most tremendous outlet uh, and space for international directors to come together and collaborate and exchange ideas and methodologies and network and create in a way that I think is unparalleled in the world. Uh, I myself did not know coming there almost 10 years ago how it would radically alter the landscape of my life professionally and personally. I met people there that I still to this day call my very good friends and we have continued to collaborate and create work around the world together. I also love the lab so much that I decided to create my own version in Toronto along with two fellow alums, Esther Jun and Elite Isikoslu, uh, that we call Directors Lab North, and we are now in our eighth year. So without a doubt, the lab has influenced my life in ways that I never thought it would. Um, and, and the Lincoln Center have created something so magical and special there, and I think the ripple effect and the impact it's had around the world artistically and personally is something that can't be measured. And I'm really happy to be part of this secret society of labbies. And I wish I could be there to celebrate with you, but huge congratulations and thank you for your dedication, Anne, and Lincoln Center to um, us directors. Bye. Okay, and our final in-house is Jay. Hi, uh, my name is Jay Stern, and I was in the Lincoln Center Lab in 2009 and 2010. Uh, and I, everyone's pretty much said everything that can be said. I mean, it's an incredible life-changing experience for most of us who've done the lab. Um, the thing that was really most transforming for me, which is something that, that's been mentioned as well, is, is this idea of collaboration. Uh, we, there we had two different themes in, in 2009 and 2010, but the, the, the focus that Anne was, was really thinking about was about collaboration between directors. And I had pitched a, a really personal family story uh, that I've been working on and researched for years. I've traveled to Latvia, all kinds of years spent on this project I had pitched and, and, and accepted it, uh, and then assigned a Russian director I'd never met with before in my life to work on it with me and develop my family history. Um, and that experience of, of, of doing that and learning to communicate with someone with a completely different background and approach to theater to, to work on something passionate and personal together, it was just one experience we had. There were so many of us there, for, and again, really international group, who were really fascinated with the idea of, we all have different training, different techniques, different approaches to what theater is in our lives, in our communities, and that conversation that began in the lab, we, a bunch of us wanted to keep going, and actually a, a, a group called the Worldwide Lab sort of spun out of that experience in 2009 and 2010, and, and thanks to Anne, uh, we worked at Watermill for a week and, and formed a group that has presented work in Rome, in Greece, in Brooklyn, uh, in Taipei, and now in Thunder Bay, Ontario this year. We're gonna be working with indigenous actors uh, to sort of tell their stories, but with full collaboration, this idea of, of really opening up the process um, to, to how directors can work together. And we have an open door policy, we sit in on each other's rehearsals, that kind of support group was unimaginable, I think, for, for most of us until that experience in the lab. And I'm actually gonna be down in, in Alabama in a state park uh, in two weeks to see uh, Ann, Annie Levy's uh, CCC project, which began in the lab and again in our worldwide lab that is now being taken up and done, um, uh, done out there. So, so just, it ripples out and continues tremendously. And I think, I think American theater, which we are the future of, is much better off for the lab uh, than we would have ever been uh, without it. Thank you all for summing everything up so fast. I appreciate it. It's so different. Um, I, I wanted to thank Frank for sitting where? <laughs> oh, right there. For, for giving us this opportunity because, as I was saying in the green room, we, we all, we're a very private place, and we've never had any publicity. I mean, we've had articles written about us, but we don't film. We take a lovely picture at the beginning of the year. But we try and, be, we try and work um, in a way that allows us to do things that we fail at, or do things that we can't do, or try things 
that embarrass ourselves. And I think we've been very successful at that over the years. Um, so this is the first time that anyone's ever filmed us or there's any record of us or listening to all of your comments is amazing because I do stay in touch with people and I hear things, but to hear this together, I, I'm very grateful for you for giving us this, this opportunity. I am going to speak only briefly, but I definitely um, am using this opportunity to go on the record with a few things. Um, <laughs> I'm grateful to all of my uh, directors who called in from all over the world. We tried Mongolia, didn't have an internet connection, so that <laughs> didn't work out. Um, when this lab began, um, I, I want to just thank a few people who made it possible. Um, I proposed uh, doing something with playwrights, couldn't quite figure this out, then we decided maybe we would do something with directors. So the first person I want to thank is Andre Bishop, who is the person who said, I don't remember who said this, oh, there are only 100 directors in America. We'll do one lab and that'll be it. <laughs> 25 years later, five spin-off labs, wrong. But he was the one who believed in it and started it and without a penny of funding said, do it. So it began really with, with him. Um, joining him was our executive producer, Bernard Gersten, who in his typical way was like, what is this lab? Going with our, uh, at, that, at that point, development director, who I'll talk about in a second, Hattie Judiger, to raise some money for the lab now in its fourth year to a foundation that was spending down. We were, they were, I wasn't even there. They were looking to ask for something like $30,000 and in the back of the cab on the way over, he said, oh, screw it, let's ask him for a million. <laughs> and they gave us a million dollars and that <laughs> kept us going for 25 years. So uh, I owe him for that, uh, that was typical of Bernie. Um, and, and my last thank you really on, uh, on the staff list goes to the development department of Lincoln Center Theater. Hattie Judiger, my colleague, Neil Brilliant, and Leah Madry, who's sitting over there in the corner with the <laughs> earrings, uh, who, who just go to the mat for me. That is all I can say. I mean, I had a, an application, no idea why, out of the blue, three months ago from Cameroon. I mean, who has heard of the lab in Cameroon? Like, how the hell am I gonna get this person? They're coming. And, and I don't know how it all happened, but they're coming. Um, and that is the attitude that I feel, the support that I feel from all of you every year. Um, so thank you for that. I'm glad you're here. Um, our original brainstorming committee, because this is not something that I developed myself, the, the question of what to do, how to do something with directors, how it would work, what form it would take, was way beyond the capacity of any one individual. So here are some of the people who used to come up to Lincoln Center, sit in the patron room, eat cookies, and discuss. Mm -hmm. The first lab assistant, Howard Solomon, a very good playwright. John Conklin, the designer. Chris Durang, Novella Nelson, who was also in the first acting company. Joanne Acolytis, Chris Durang, Lori Anderson, Reggie Montgomery, Lois Smith, Graziella Danielle, Garland Wright, Richard Eyre, Tina Packer, Tony Kushner, Tina Ramirez. All of these people's ideas bled into what became that first director's lab. And I also have to thank all of my wonderful lab assistants over these years who are the mainstay of the director's lab. Here's Carrie Kendall Laurel, who's my current lab assistant. But you all will remember Kate Marvin, Jill McLean, Amy Conant, Brian Roff, Howard Solomon. I mean, they made it work. So I cannot finish this evening without thanking them. Um, and then the literally hundreds of artists who have always eagerly, without hesitation, come into the lab to share their thoughts and methods with you for a small honorarium, which Dan Solomon used to always describe as, oh, Dinner for two at a two-star restaurant <laughs> <laughs> from Bart Scher, who was actually in the first lab, Lev Doden, Robert Wilson, Simon McBurney, Tony Servillo. Tony Servillo was directing Servant of Two Masters at the, at the uh, Rose Theater. What a nightmare in the tech, okay? And I bring the lab up in the freight elevator with Dion Warwick, and we go into, <laughs> we go into the theater, and he's in a wig, and he's on stage directing this Goldoni play and with a translator following, and he says, director, directore, and he comes off the stage 
at, with the trash that are following, and everyone else is waiting, and he only has, you know, two days of tech or something, and he just goes into this tirade about George Ostrilla, and you, you must know George Ostrilla, and I know enough Italian to know what he's talking about. He completely ran away from his translator. She could not keep up with him, and everyone's saying, like, Tony, <laughs> go back on stage. But this is, finally I had to say, thank you. We must leave now and go back in the freight elevator with Dionne Warwick. <laughs> I mean, I mean he, he, was, he was typically enthusiastic. Julie Taymor did come in after the Minneapolis tryout of Lion King, and we solved the hyena problem. Do you remember that? Yeah, he, and the lab said, I don't feel the hyenas are sympathetic enough in Lion King, so she redid some hyena things. So I feel we contributed to, uh, <laughs> to, the, to the Lion King. Um, uh, Peter Schumann of Bread and Puppets, Shen Chen, Michael and Dachi. I finally talked somebody into buying him a plane ticket, and they were very glad they did after the English patient, patient was released. Um, I've just admitted the 2018 lab, 32 countries, 12 states. Two of my directors aren't funded yet, India and Lebanon. One stateless Kuwaiti without a passport. Anybody know anybody in the U.S. Embassy in Kuwait City? I want to know about it. I have a 2015 lab director I sent into exile because he directed Tamburlaine by Christopher Marlowe, a play the Secret Service of his country thought he had written and insulted their national icon. He is in a refugee camp in Germany right now, and I am trying to get him a job. And I once had a lab, and I will, and I once had a lab, got a, dr a lab director out of jail in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, because he wrote an epic poem about Zimbabwe, which did not mention the ancestors of Mugabe. So I went through the ambassador of Cameroon, whose aide gave me the cell phone of the aide of the ambassador in Zim. Her name, and I will never forget it, I've never met her in person, was Sharon Dean. And she got in her car and drove up to Bulawayo from Harare, and the next thing I know is Jill McLean saying, my God, sticks is out, he popped up on Facebook. I got him out of jail. So I don't have too much to say. I try and <laughs> put all the material you have given me in you directors into some kind of very intense format. And then I try and get out of the way. And you can see the extraordinary lengths you have all extended it to. We're all connected on one great list serve. If anyone isn't on it, email labassistant at lct.org and we'll put you on it. Um, you can also get it in digest form, but that's where we put everything from activities to questions to housing. I have, uh, I'm just asking Carrie today, I've got directors right now coming in this summer or this August from Mexico, the Philippines, Peru, Seattle, and Chicago who need a place to sleep in August. Anybody can help out? Email lab assistant. Um, and to end this, I went to Chicago to see the production of 2066 by Roberto Bolaño that Bob Falls did. And um, I sat at the table at the opening night with the Consul General from Chile. And I was telling him about the directors lab. He said, I'm going to send Chilean directors. I have so many directors now coming in from South America and Central America. He has sent me nine Chilean directors. Like, I can't have nine Chileans in the lab. <laughs> Maybe two at the most. Um, I mean. Every day there were applications from Japan, from Chile coming in. I mean, this guy Roberto was amazing. And then I got a call about two weeks ago from a guy saying, "So Roberto said, just call Anne. And on, on my dream is to write a musical on Broadway." And he said, "You could help me." I said, "Well, I don't know anything about musicals." <laughs> and, you know. So he came up. He's written a musical. Here it is. <laughs> I said, "Don't bring it. I can't do anything with it." And he said. Yes, you'll do something with it. So if anybody is interested in having this promotional copy of One Silent Shout, Seeds from War and Love, a rock opera by Jaime Rosas, please come and take it. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Well, um, um, thank you very much. And, and, uh, someone once said, you're a really great journalist if you get someone into jail and someone out of jail. So you did both, so you must also be uh, a very, very good director of, a, of directors. 
Um, maybe before we go um, and right away in, into a tunnel, just say again, so that everybody knows, you know, what, what, what did you feel was missing? Why did you really do it? And perhaps a little bit about the mechanics, how many days um, and how the weeks are broken down. Well, I, mean, I don't want to say too much because I think you've seen examples of it. It's different every year. So um, it's five weeks. No, it's sometimes it's three weeks, sometimes it's five weeks, sometimes it's production, sometimes it isn't. It just sort of depends on what's going on. Uh, I think it really depends on what the directors submit and what, what the room availability is at Lincoln Center. So there's no model. It's created, Frank and I were having a talk today about why I don't want to talk so much because it really isn't about me. We, we, we also could have, if you'd had a revolve on this stage like we have at Lincoln Center, we could have revolved and you guys could have been on the panel. You know, it was just a kind of, I'm not saying random thing, I wanted you to be on the panel, but, but, but everyone is special. I mean, and everyone brings something in which then becomes what we do. So it isn't like I'm, I'm it is a Sudoku puzzle, so I'm putting it together, but it's different every year because the world is different every year and, and the people in it are different every year. So also the themes come out of application. You look at it and get inspired from what arrives. Yeah, and, and, I, and I get inspired by the listserv, which is why I'm pushing the listserv because what people are talking about, what seems to be interesting to them, you know, that's what's on people's minds in the profession. So we try and tap into that if we can. Uh, that's a very valuable source. So ma maybe we uh, use that method and tap into uh, what all you were thinking and also to reinforce um, what Anne and did say we could have invited so many more, all of you who are here, but I said our time is limited, we can't do too much, uh, and so I apologize um, for that. But still, uh, many of you are here are in the room uh, who participate, or maybe you have questions or comments, so um, let us know. We have uh, Salma here and you, Chandler, will bring a mic not only to hear you better, but we also, as you or know, share recording your own, it. Or share your own experience. Yeah, share your experience. So um, we'll open it up right away, maybe a little bit more light on the audience, and um, it's declared uh, Lincoln Center Theater Directors Lab Town Hall. <laughs> yes. Yep. I know we just mentioned the listserv, but I, I really, um, you know, I know we've all had bad experiences with listservs, and I, I do recommend the digest version, but it, it, you know, it's been over 18 years since I had anything to do with the director's lab. If it weren't for the listserv, I don't even know if I would know that the lab was still in existence. Uh, and through the listserv, um, I, I had a, a piece picked for a festival at Black Mountain College in Asheville, and I was able to know that Monica Gross was living in Asheville, and she served as like my local coordinator. I could send packages of props and costumes to her. She helped me find talent to perform my piece. Uh, she gave me a place to stay for a few nights, uh, and she even videotaped the project. And so all of that, you know, sort of became a little collaboration that could have never happened without the listserv. Oh, come on. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe, see some. Maybe about, yep. Okay, sorry, I was gonna keep quiet, but um, I'm Cappy. I was part of the 2000 and 2001 lab, and I was one of the founders of Directors Lab West with Ernie. Um, and we started the lab the first year that I came to Lincoln Center's lab, and I remember getting back to what so many people felt was the wasteland of LA, uh, and it took me two months to sort of tell people who I was now, because there was such a cracking open um, that I couldn't, quite describe or grasp what it meant at the time, but has had so many ramifications over the years. Um, the listserv has saved my life multiple times. I finally did move to New York to go to grad school and was five days out from getting here and being homeless and living in a cardboard box in Central Park when a lab alum offered up her apartment so I had a place to stay. Um, but. It's been the community and the, the fearlessness of bouncing ideas off of each other um, that has been so important and that I keep returning to and it's why I kept producing the lab for 15 years before leaving LA and I can't thank Anne enough for just changing my world. 
Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I, I would say is, is the LA lab is the first to spin off because I think the L LA needed the lab the most. Um, and back, I and I dared you to do it, yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, theater really was a sort of second tier art form in Los Angeles and boy was it necessary and boy has it been successful. It took a while to find the right venue for it and Pasadena is the perfect place for it to be. Everybody who ran theaters all over the West Coast was very supportive and they would come to Pasadena to speak and participate and, and now there's this pretty major theater movement in Los Angeles and the lab is really focusing on young theater companies, everybody's coming up to Pasadena it's been an ideal place. Uh, Chicago spun off after that, Director's Lab North. We have a Director's Lab in Melbourne. We tried to start a Director's Lab in Russia, uh, which got off to a very promising start, only they only got the money 48 hours before it began, so uh, nobody could actually go. <laughs> I've learned a few things about Russia over the years. Um, and now we have this amazing new lab in the Mediterranean which I think is gonna be quite interesting to try and define the Mediterranean artistically and not politically. Um, our first job, you can all join in, is to think of plays set in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Mamma Mia, Pierre Gint. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, various Greek plays. Um, but but that, that would be something I would have never anticipated but came organically out of of uh, people meeting each other, et cetera. So again, these are not my ideas. These are just ideas that came from a bunch of LA directors saying, oh, now we have to go home. It's like, start something there. Um, Frank, I think we're, we're probably in good shape here. Yeah, I don't know, is there any more? Um, yeah, it's here, comments, so there. No, no, it takes a while. A number of, of, of people in the audience who are not labbies, I'm happy to say. Yeah. Uh, I participated in the lab in 2017, uh, which was a really inspiring and contentious lab because we were talking about political theater and the obligation of the artists to engage with the world and, and current events in, in an immediate way. And something fascinating about that lab was to see, you know, you talk about the listserv and what people are interested in discussing and a lot of artists in America were interested in discussing the current political climate and race in America. Um, but it was fascinating to see European directors really interested in questions of integration and questions of national identity. Uh, a, a lot of uh, artists from uh, Asia thinking about questions of authoritarianism and freedom of expression, questions um, from uh, Africa and from the Middle East of uh, kind of uh, uh, authoritarian governments and of public health. And, and it was amazing to kind of get out of, uh, especially coming from a New York background, uh, the real provincialism of American theater <coughs> and thinking about what are the international questions that we as directors should be asking and how can we transcend borders. And, and that was quite, quite eye-opening to see, you know, uh, what questions are the same, what questions are different, and, and how can we help each other answer those questions because of our perspectives as insider or outsiders. Um, so that was, I was quite grateful for that perspective. So has there been, uh, from Lincoln, has there been an attempt to say there's a Lincoln Center Director's Lab um, theater group? Um, is there, for them that works in, in New York, um, is there? There are, uh, I, I don't, I don't uh, make a point of keeping track of everything. I mean, I simply can't anymore. Mm -hmm. But there are so many groups of people who either have become friends or have started working together, some um, multi, National, different na nationalities, some within the city. Um, I mean, I once had seven African American women directors, all from the Midwest. It's like, why don't you go? Why don't you start a theater together? You know that. I mean, these kinds of things just happen as a result of the numbers involved, and the 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 um, the thing that I try and do is just to encourage them to act, to to do something. Um, but I have, I have no way of taking account of it. This has actually been pretty great to listen to this <laughs> because <laughs> some of it I knew, but not all of it. And I think if we multiply this times the probably, you know, 1,800 directors who've been part of the lab over the course of the last 25 years, 
it's pretty remarkable. I mean, we, we do have multinational industries. We make, have film production, which is multinational. We have music, which is uh, a collaboration between people from many countries. It's really only in the theater that we're provincial, that we work within our own countries. So it, it seemed a, a, an, an obvious and easy way to begin to figure that out. And that was definitely figured out by the lab members themselves. And then maybe, maybe I've got a last question to you also, or to all of you. I mean, we are now over a year into the Trump uh, administration or regime, or however one say it. Do you feel there's something changing? Uh, is th do you feel something is in, in, in the air? Is there different, different activities, or different themes? I think I think uh, I think theater does change radically uh, every uh, over time, and I I try and just, and that's again why the listserv is useful and and you know, my connections to people, I just try and stay tuned to, um, to what seems to be interesting to people. And as, as, as you can hear from these different discussions, I mean different uh, testimonies, you know, it really has changed over the years. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I don't make, and I'm not in a position to have the knowledge to make predictions, but I think it, I've seen so many changes in the past. Um, I mean, we, we survived 9-11. We did this amazing lab on style the year before, the summer before 9-11, which was an incredibly interesting, what is a style of theater? I had gone to see a Richard Maxwell play and I realized, oh, this is a style of theater, a style of acting, a style of directing, a style of production. And looking back over other styles historically, why Stanislavski didn't like Salvini, for example, different styles clashing. Um, I, I created a whole lab around that question using some base texts about style, mostly uh, by Michel Sandini, but then I used um, Thornton Wilder as, as a sort of central figure, courtesy of this wonderful Wilder estate that was really behind, I mean, what a smart idea for the Wilder estate to say, let's make Thornton Wilder the focus of 75 good young directors. Let, that'll that'll get a lot of productions going in the future. Mm -hmm. And Wilder, of course, you know, in The Matchmaker, moves into musical theater, all the Asian techniques and the short plays. I mean, uh, Our Town, Skin of Our Teeth is based on Finnegan's Wake. I mean, there's, there's the Alceste, it is a Greek trilogy. I mean, he really is uh, trying on styles like crazy. Um, and that was the year that you were working with Dillolo. I asked people to submit plays that were stylist, stylized in certain ways. And we did workshops of those plays. And then after that lab closed, 9-11 happened. And that whole thing just seemed ridiculous. I mean, everyone who was, I remember somebody was teaching at NYU and they said, all the painters are going into medicine. And all, and all of the, uh, you know, all of the lawyers are becoming actors. I mean, everyone's realizing this is, a, life is short, we have to do what we love. And so the following year, doing something like a style lab just seemed insane. So I admitted a lab. I, I simply took a rule or in divided in two, hadn't met anyone yet. And I had the people on the left side of the ruler suggest a play they wanted to direct under an hour. And the people on the other side of the ruler produced the, p the plays of on the other side of the ruler. So you produced Jay's play, and you, you, know, you produced Hal's play, et cetera. And my thinking only being uh, that many of, uh, of the directors will become artistic directors who need to understand and support other people's work. And we rented here and we put on 28 plays because it was just like, get, let's hire some actors and get back to work and not stop thinking, let's just do. So, so y you have that ability to, to, uh, to go with the times depending on larger forces beyond your control. Thank you, Frank, for having us, and uh, thank you for this celebration. Well, thank you all for coming and taking the time, and thank you all for listening and uh, uh, to our viewers. Really, uh, our uh, really tremendous respect for um, all of you uh, for uh, for participating and continuing as a would work as a style of life or to be engaged in theater, but also you know for Anne and for Lincoln Center Theater also to continue this tremendously um, su successful, I think, but also important and influential uh, project. And we really wish there would be so. Uh, many, many, many more so like this. So it's a fantastic uh, 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 enterprise, and um, I hope we um, all will um, 
live up to a standard you set with uh, that. And so uh, good luck with everything that uh, lies in front of all of you and in continuation for the new lab. And um, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Here in the room, uh, and then um, whoever wants to, there's an archive part, one third 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 archive part, one